Karen L. She's the web services librarian for the Naval Postgraduate School. She's going to be joining us online. So uh, forgive us if it takes a minute to get this set up correctly. But she'll be talking about Google Analytics for security. Test, test, test a bunch. Testing. I'm talking about Google Analytics today. Can everyone hear me? They can. They're all shaking their head. And you're okay. a go. All right. Thanks, Stacey. All right. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Google Analytics um, and how you can use the data that you're collecting with this tool um, to help you with your threat analysis. Um, I want to put a big disclaimer out there that uh, using Google Analytics for any of your web products uh, will not make your your site more or less vulnerable. Um, it also won't be able to tell you definitively if you are uh, being attacked. However, the data can be used to inform your investigations um, of, of potential threats that you might have. So I'll explain that a little bit more. I'm going to do some show and tell of our um, Google Analytics that we have set up at our library. Um, and also everything I'm going to cover today kind of assumes um, that you guys have Google Analytics and that you're already using it. Um, in other words, I'm not going to be covering how to configure Google Analytics for your web products. So uh, let's get in there. Let me close this. You guys, you guys are going to get this um, this handout. I think Stacy printed it out for me. So something to take home. So what I have opened up here. Let me make it a little bit bigger in case it's too small for you guys. Did that? Is that a good size? Maybe. Um, I'll go down, down a little bit so I can see it better. Okay, um, so this is our Google Analytics. I have it configured to show basically last quarter for us. Um, as an academic library, we have quarters, so if you have semesters, you could do the same type thing. Um, but we have a very steady trend line. Um, actually, before I get into that, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, <laughs> If you haven't already done so, I want to show one setting that is the simplest thing you can do. Um, if you're in your product, you click admin in the lower left, and then click view settings in the right. Um, and there is a tiny little checkbox, exclude all hits from known bots and spiders. Um, the easiest setting you can possibly configure. Um, this isn't going to prevent bots and spiders from crawling your site. Uh, but it will exclude that from being collected as part of your data, uh, which is a good thing. Um, many times bots and spiders aren't actually trying to um, infiltrate your site or take your data, but when they're crawling it, um, it could be counted as hits or page views. Uh, so that could inflate your statistics. So make sure if you haven't already, you have that box checked um, and you can do that for all the products that you have uh, that you're collecting data for. So let's go back to that audience um, report. This is the default report for Google Analytics. Um, and something I'm going to hopefully, I'm going to re reiterate over and over as I talk today, um, is that in order to really understand what's going on with your web services, you need to be checking your Google Analytics data regularly. Um, and this is because if you're checking it weekly, um, at a minimum, honestly, you're really going to know what are the normal trends. Um, and so for us, you can see we have a very steady trend line, trend line um, that has um, high peak usage Monday through Wednesday typically um, that dies down every single weekend. Um, within the last quarter, we did have two three-day holiday weekends, and you can see there was one in January here, so the Monday was a pretty low hit, and there was also President's Day um, in February here. So. Other than that, um, no real anomalies for us. Uh, we can even see the very last week of the quarter, which was um, the week of finals. We had lower usage, but that's, again, to be expected since our students are uh, taking their finals and completing their classwork. Um, in addition, something because I look at this regularly, I know that for our main library website, we usually have around 75% returning visitors um, and only around 25% new visitors. So the reason you want to look at that and know those kind of those kind of things is so that when you, if you were to log in and look at last week's, 
and you see that um, you know we had 75% new visitors and 25% returning, that might be a bit of a red flag, um, something that I want to investigate further by looking at some other reports. Um, so just wanted to kind of put that out there. If you know what your regular usage is, you're really going to um, get more out of using this for security purposes. Um, so let's see, let's get into a good report for checking out where in the world your users are coming from. So under the audience tab, we scroll down to geo, sorry about that, and click on location. This tells us where in the world uh, people were accessing our site last quarter. And if you scroll down, you can actually see the whole report uh, in numbers as well, which really goes to show that predominantly we're getting access from within the United States, um, but we are getting some hits from other countries as well. For us and our institution, this is very normal. Uh, we do have students who are attending from all of these countries. Um, so while they're very small percentages, we know um, that this is our real users. This isn't um, spam or some sort of hack trying to be attempted. Um, so you can see, you can scroll over each and every country and kind of see numbers. Uh, just to give you a better idea if you like to look at it more visually. And um, in addition, you can drill down into each of these reports even further. So I clicked on US and now I can see that within the US we had we had um, every single state uh, access our site within the last quarter. Uh, but predominantly, most of the sessions were in California, uh, which makes sense, that's where we are. And you can even drill down further. If you click on the state, um, you can see each city. Um, so that's, you can do that for every single country that we saw. Um, this is a great way uh, not only to really understand who your users are, uh, where they are in the world, but again, if you're checking this regularly, you can see if there are any red flags. Um, for example, for us, if we, if we were a site that didn't have much international traffic and all of a sudden one quarter I see a bunch of hits um, coming from Russia or something, uh, I might want to look into that. <laughs> um, so again, it's really specific to what your um, your site is, what your regular usage is. And something I want to show as well is this is the main report for location, uh, but you can actually use this as a secondary dimension in any other report. So for example, I'm actually going to open up the uh, browser and OS report. This is something, again, really great to get to know your users and how they are accessing your site. Um, for us, Chrome's number one browser last uh, last quarter, followed closely by Firefox. But what we can do here under secondary dimension is add country. So we can see um, specifically within the United States, these are the top five um, browsers. Uh, South Korea likes Internet Explorer <laughs> uh, for our usage specifically. Um, and something I didn't note yet, but I want to point out here is that there's a lot of data in these reports, um, not just the number of sessions, um, the percentage of your total, but also look at um, the number of new users. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Go new users uh, to see if these are new or returning. Bounce rates. This is something that you want to be very low. A bounce is something that's going to immediately uh, transfer out. So if it's high, that's a bad thing. Um, and then the average session duration. This is a little bit of a um, a clue that could uh, have something to do with potential spam. Um, if it's zero minutes and zero seconds, uh, that might give you an idea. That might not be a real person. Um, so things like that you can always look at. Um, okay, so another, another report that I think is very useful for this investigation you might be conducting um, is under acquisition and overview. This is a great report just in general. You can see uh, within our last quarter, we had uh, about half direct access to our site, uh, which means that they have the URL. Maybe they know it and they're just typing it in the browser. Maybe they have it bookmarked. Um, maybe they were provided the URL in an email. That would still be a direct link to it. Um, and then we've got about 30% um, referral traffic, and that means it's being referred from another site. And then uh, about 21% organic search. And again, similar to the other reports, you can drill down into each one. So if I click on referral, we can see um, where they're coming from. And this, again, makes sense to us because we're looking at this regularly. Um, our top referrer 
is the NPS homepage, which makes sense, um, and we're expecting that, uh, followed by our SFX uh, journal linker, um, and then our LibGuides is our third. Um, you might see some weird URLs. Uh, this one is one that we did investigate just to find out what it was, um, and it was, in fact, um, the LibGuides APIs, basically those widgets you can create within your LibGuides products. Um, those are linking to us uh, since we've created them. <laughs> Uh, so that ended up being not spam. That's a good thing. That's something that we're using to um, market our site. Um, the intranet, again, is for the institution at large. So everything here makes sense for us. But this is a good report for you to look at. If, if something doesn't look right, you can investigate it a little bit further um, to understand it a little bit more. Um, and then let me go back to the top level acquisition again, because you can also drill down into the organic search um, we did have social, but it's almost nothing. That's why it didn't really show up in the pie chart above. Um, but when I click organic search, um, and then I want to click source instead of keyword, I can see specifically um, where which which search engine that they're being used that is being used to access our site. Uh, Google's by and large the the top one. Bing, Yahoo, Ask. I know what those are, so I'm not concerned. This one here, I don't quite know what that is. I mean, it was only two sessions in the in the whole uh, quarter, so I mean, that's not that many hits. But again, if we look over to the right, we see these are new users um, and zero, 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 the average session duration. That's it's a bit of a giveaway. That might not be a person. So again, you can drill down into these, and if I click on that, it's not giving me that much more information. So what I can do again is use those secondary dimensions. And if I start doing country, just to try to understand this a little bit more, um, all right, these are coming from Russia. This is something I might wanna look into. Um, and if I scroll up, I can see those two sessions. One happened on January 23rd, and one happened on March 5th, I think, or 6th. So this is a service that our IT uh, department on campus manages. So what I might do is ask them if they were running any updates on those two days. Um, maybe there was something that was vulnerable for a moment, um, something tried to crawl. Uh, maybe let them know that I found this information and see if there's anything that does need to be patched. Um, so again, I don't know for sure what this is, but it's a little bit fishy. Um, let's go back to uh, another example I wanted to show you guys that because we were checking this regularly, uh, we were able to determine another kind of spam camp campaign that was happening. Um, so let me actually toggle over to our LibGuides um, Google Analytics and uh, let's change the dates to, let's look from November to December uh, this last year. And there was a lot of stuff going, around, going on around that time in our country. Um, and if you scroll down on the main um, report here, we can see there's a little bit of a spam campaign going on. What happened here is that a hacker uh, was able to hack the language setting on certain machines, and it wasn't in an effort to infiltrate our site or the LibGuides or SpringShare products in general, um, but it was something that came up in our hits, basically. Uh, all they were trying to do was get their message um, across, and they know that Google Analytics is a pretty widely used software, so if they were able to do this, it would be on the front page, um, that first default report. Um, so for us, what we did to end up uh, removing this very minimal, luckily, um, collection of data, this is all spam, uh, we made what is called a segment. So if you aren't familiar with this, I'm just going to really quickly show you. You can add a segment. Um, for us, we created one called does not include spam language <laughs> to make it easy. Uh, and you can apply that to your data. And it's almost exactly the same as you saw the, um, the number of spam hits that we got was uh, point, uh, let's see, 0.65% of all users. Um, so um, this isn't totally ruining our, our, our data collection or our statistics for this quarter, uh, but it's something that because we were looking at it regularly, we saw it as soon as it popped up. And when we do make our reports for the whole year, We'll include this segment in there um, to kind of remove that 0.6% uh, of spam. So 
can go ahead and remove this. And another example, let me toggle back to our main website just to show you. Um, because I was checking this regularly, um, one day, again, I've, I've got it back on November to December because it keeps whatever you just changed it to. And there's a clear spike in usage uh, right around November 16th. Our normal trend line of being around five to 600 max sessions per day on the top days, um, this just blows that out of the water. So when we saw this, we had to try to figure out what was going on. Um, and it clearly we didn't figure it out immediately. We still had to collect that data for a couple of days as we were investigating. Um, but we were able to use Google Analytics to kind of figure out what exactly was going on. So if I go into those specific days, the 16th and the 17th, um, we can see tons of hits. And look at this pie chart, over 93% new visitors, only 6.2% returning. And, and I know because I'm looking at this regularly, that's not normal for us. Uh, we can also see that the average session duration is very small, um, and that's, again, not normal for us. So we started looking at some of the reports that we look at regularly, um, and we eventually <laughs> looked at the browser and OS uh, report and found that over 94% of the hits on these two days was coming from Firefox specifically. And after doing a little bit more research on the web, Googling it, uh, we found there was an issue with a specific version of Firefox. And you can actually even do that as a secondary dimension um, browser version. Browser size is also a fun one. Uh, but we could see that version 45 uh, was clearly having an issue. <laughs> um, and uh, we did some investigation throughout our library. Um, turns out the machines in the library had an OK version, but we had two kiosks uh, set up in the library that were using this 45 version of Firefox. As soon as we upgraded that version, uh, we started collecting normal numbers again. So this was a great example for us as to how we could use Google Analytics to make sure um, we're not getting hit or spammed uh, by some buggy browser. Uh, <laughs> so um, those are the main things I wanted to show. I can also, um, since I was going a little bit quick there, let me go through another uh, fun report, a good one to kind of give you that better uh, picture of your users. Let me actually go back and do the whole quarter again so that we're looking at normal data. Um, so a top report that we look at is our site content to see what our top pages were in the last quarter. Um, and I like the page title dimension versus the URL. Um, so we can see that top hit is our home page followed by our NPS thesis page, things like that. Uh, but using those secondary dimensions, um, just like we could use the country as a secondary dimension, we can use that acquisition um, as a secondary dimension. I like the source medium, and I'll show exactly what that means uh, by selecting it. Um, predominantly, um, almost 40% of our page views are direct. In other words, uh, they've got that URL. Uh, but our second is of the home page, people Googling it, and the medium is organic search. Uh, if you remember that acquisition report, there was referral, organic search, um, and direct. So uh, those are going to be the mediums, and then the source is going to show uh, what they were using to access your site. So it all makes sense here, um, but it's it's interesting to see specifically, you know, some of our access is coming from Google directly to our NPS VCs landing page, um, and others are just going straight here and might move on to the VCs page. Um, but this gives you a clear idea. If you were to see some weird URL, again, you might want to investigate that. Um, let me see. That might be all I have. <laughs> but I wanted to really kind of reiterate again that Google Analytics is a third-party software, which means they are susceptible to their own hacking. Um, just like that language spam campaign that I showed earlier, a lot of people are very much drawn to trying to hack Google Analytics because it is so widely used, um, but it's not going to make your site more or less susceptible. It really is a well-trusted tool, and um, from my perspective, it helps us investigate issues um, and continue to uh, analyze not just the usage of our site, but maintain uh, 
normal usage and investigate any anomalies that we might find. So if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm curious at um, at our institute. Um, they recommend that students not connect their campus email accounts to the third party email accounts, like um, having the educational email connected to uh, Gmail or something like that. And I'm just curious at NPS, is that a practice that you tell your students to? Karen, she's asking about um, whether if you have a, an educational institutional email account, um, people tend to uh, um, forward it to a, a generic Gmail account or that sort of thing. Um, am I capturing that correctly? Yeah. Um, do you have Did a, a Analytics account with? Um, not so much necessarily with analytics, but as a as a best practice, is there a, generally a policy that recommends against that? Well, I'll say that um, as a, for NPS wide, there is a it's actually a government wide rule that you can't put personal emails on public facing websites. So we are required to only use those um, unidentifiable uh, email addresses. We have one circ desk at nps.edu, uh, ref desk, things like that um, are the only ones that we're able to share publicly. In many ways, that can be a little bit annoying um, if you're trying to, you know, talk about a specific library liaison or one of our subject specialists. We can't provide their public or their personal information on a public website. Um, so, for us, we're required not to. But I would say best practices, if you have one of those uh, less identifiable ones, um, I would err on the side of using that for security reasons. And and I'll just put in. Um, there isn't a policy at MPS to do it, um, to not, or to, they're allowed to kind of do whatever they want. If they wanted to forward their MPS email to their Gmail account, they could. Um, I don't know if anyone really does that. So, is that what you're? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, I think that's it. Any other questions? She's asking how many libraries are using Google Analytics, so hang on just a minute. Cal State Monterey Bay. Looks like about eight people in the room out of uh, 22 or so are, have, institutions are using it. And something I might add um, about Google Analytics is you don't have to be um, the server admin per se for the system that you want to set up Google Analytics for. Uh, for example, we have, we collect it for all of our different web apps. LibGuides is a completely separate system that's um, managed by SpringShare, as you probably all know. LibMeeting is our room reservation app that we actually built in-house. Uh, things like LifeRay, which is our core website, uh, that's actually managed by the IT department on campus. So you can have any and all different kinds of systems um, that you can look at the data for specifically within your one analytics account. So that's a great reason to use it, I think. Uh, it gives you a little bit more control. So my, my question is, you, you demonstrated how to find um, weird things within your Google Analytics. So for example, those hits you were getting from Russia that had a strange referrer site. What are some of the next steps? Because it's, it's great that you know that maybe something's happening there, but if you could just run through some of your common next steps of what you do after you notice something like that. Okay, Karen, um, the question is that uh, once you've noticed anomalies uh, using Google Analytics, uh, what are your normal next 
steps in terms of trying to pin it down? Good question. Um, so if we're maintaining the server, if it's something we run in-house, we're going to go look at the logs. Um, we have uh, various error and access logs that we have set up on our servers that really uh, will bring it down to like the minute as to something weird happening. Um, so that's step one if we own it. If it's something that our IT department owns, we're going to ask them if maybe they could share those logs with us or if they could look at it um, specific to this state and uh, something that we see on Google Analytics, we could give them kind of that lead. Um, and if it's something completely external, we're going to reach out to them as well. Um, the example of that Firefox one, we did some tests in-house. We thought maybe it had something to do with some of the computers in the library, so we did tests on our public access machines, our login machines. We have a bunch of different kinds, and that's the way in which we were able to determine that it was the kiosk specifically. Um, so it's not necessarily you found it and you go. There's definitely some investigation involved. Um, but I think it provides that first step to help you look at a date or time. Um, I hope that answers that question. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks a lot, Karen. Thank you. Stop sharing this screen.